19 days after the press conference announcing the sale of WCW to the Eric Bischoff-headed Fusion Media, Eric was backstage on Nitro on the night continuing to set the stage for the relaunch of the company, addressing the roster in a pre-show meeting in the afternoon with some of the points made being him talking about the vision for the new presentation of the product while telling the performers to get in peak physical shape. With the current plan the moment the sale becomes official being a possible shutdown of the TV product with both Nitro and Thunder off the air to set up a big marketing and rebranding campaign for the new WCW and come back for the big return show with Goldberg Sting Booker and possibly Hall and Hogan if the legal case against the company can be dropped in time. All making their return on the night to make as big of an impact as possible and build momentum from that point on. Ric Flair and Road Warrior Animal were out for a promo 15 minutes into the show with Flair announcing the main event for tonight with Nash in a handicap match against Luger and Bagwell with Nash only getting his title shot against Scott Steiner at Super Brawl if he wins the match, along with him hyping a major signing coming up later with a contract in hand set to take place at the top of the hour with a Hummer arriving to the building minutes later to build it up as Nitro after opening with a 2.4 rating climb throughout the hour to peak at a 3.1 with around 4 million viewers between 8.45 to 9 p.m. for a quarter featuring Animal and Chavo Guerrero vs Mysterio and Kidman in a tag match going 3 minutes followed by Flair on the way to the ring. With Ric Flair hyping the signing of a major player for almost the past hour, the reveal was placed to go against the Raw opening with Flair coming back out at 8.55 p.m. saying that he promised to make the new WCW the number one company in the world with one of the ways to do it is bringing in big name talent and mainstream personalities, revealing the hyped top signing to be Dustin Rhodes coming out at 8.58 two minutes before Raw goes on the air to set up the surprise return coming up. As Flair and Rhodes went back and forth with Dustin eventually not signing the deal to work under Flair, bringing out Animal for the beatdown before Dusty Rhodes made his return to a big reaction to make the save, taking out Flair before cutting a promo telling Rick that he's coming back for another round of Rhodes vs Flair, as Dusty's return turned out to be one of the big talking points of the week with Nitro in one of the rare times in show history maintaining practically the entire unopposed audience even with Raw on the air to only slightly drop from a 3.1 to a 3 first quarter rating, with the 3 rating which was the peak of the night by a wide margin also being Nitro's highest rated opposed quarter since September. Following up Raw's most watched broadcast since early September 2000 last week, the WWF hyped the two big segments of the night over the weekend with a four-way number one contender match for a shot at Kurt Angle on SmackDown in the contract signing for the Austin vs Triple H final pay-per-view match, with Kurt Angle opening the show in front of an hometown crowd at the Mellon Arena in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania referencing one of his first appearances back in Pittsburgh in early 2000 on a night that also saw him taking his first career pinfall loss in a match against Rock to bring him out, with Rock showing footage of Angle's local pizza commercial in Pittsburgh right after winning the 96 Olympics, hyping a Rock vs. Angle title match for this Thursday after winning the four-way later tonight, setting up Big Show attacking him from behind to lay him out and put his status for the main event in question.
minutes after holding its biggest opposed audience in months for the Dusty vs. Flair first segment. Nitro expectedly dropped in the second quarter to a more normal viewing pattern in a direct turnover to Raw which picked up over a million viewers at the same time, with Nitro featuring a Storm vs. Crowbar match along with Jeff Jarrett calling out Paige while Raw saw a Dudley's vs. Kai and Ty tag titles match to open a 4.8 to 2.3 rating margin, with Raw coming five days from the mega-hyped debut of the XFL on Saturday night in what is set to be one of the biggest events in Vince McMahon's career, with all eyes of the US sport and entertainment worlds on the NBC broadcast to see the new football league along with the additional product theatrics to go along with it that Vince heavily hyped in the lead-up to the launch over the past year, in what can already be a make-or-break night for the league's future with a huge audience targeted for Saturday after the massive advertising campaign across multiple high-profile networks, including expected crossover appearances by the top WWF names throughout the broadcast most notably with Vincent Rock along with J.R. Lawler and Jesse Ventura on commentary. After getting as close to a competitive segment in months, the gap grew significantly over the 30 minutes with Nitro dropping from a 3 to a Sholo 2.1 rating for a quarter mostly featuring a Rick Steiner vs Shane Douglas match going 6 minutes, while Raw picked up in every quarter during the hour with over 1.4 million viewers in total into the 5 rating range for a Val Venis vs Steve Blackman match going 4 minutes with Holly coming out post-match for the save. With the WWF's middle-of-the-card roster seeing several major changes over the past week with the most notable one being Road Dogg being fired three days ago after dealing with substances issues over the past few months, and ECW's Just Incredible being hired with more major names set to follow with the company heading to a likely shutdown in the next few weeks. Nitro's final quarter started with Luger and Bagwell coming out first for the pre-match heat promo on the Baltimore Ravens before the final commercial break with Nash on the way to the ring, with the Nash vs Luger and Bagwell handicap match going 4 minutes to hold a 2.1 rating going against Raw's big contract signing starting at the same time, with Nitro overall drawing its joint highest rating in months with a 2.6 rating to see the combined wrestling audience during the head-to-head -head hour which just a few weeks ago dropped to its lowest total in years, spiking over 2 million viewers within the last three weeks to over 9.4 million viewers. Raw's most hyped segment of the night with the Austin Triple H contract signing for No Way Out was next being placed in the final quarter of the first hour between 9.45 to 10 p.m., with the segment which saw Vince McMahon coming out first to introduce them unlike the usual pattern of starting it close to the top of the hour to go against the Nitro main event before picking up a big audience going unopposed was placed to go long over the full quarter hour with Vince hyping the signing of the Austin Hunter blow-off match set nearly a month in advance for February 25th at the No Way Out pay-per-view, saying that due to the violent history between them both Austin and Hunter have agreed to a special stipulation in the contract with no physicality the moment the deal is signed all the way to the match with Hunter getting a six-month suspension and Austin losing his WrestleMania title shot in case of a breach of the contract bringing out Triple H and Austin making their entrances at 9.54 p.m. to make it official to end with Hunter swerving Austin to lay him out before signing the contract with Austin unable to get him back for the next month, as the 13-minute segment picked up over 1.1 million viewers throughout closing the first hour with a 5.8 rating before peaking at a show-high 6.2 at the top of the hour going unopposed with around 8 million viewers.
With JR confirming last week that Rock would be off house shows starting in March, Rock who worked two non-televised events in the past four months earlier in the month was back on the road headlining another two big house shows in New York and Philadelphia on Saturday and Sunday, with the first one being a sold-out Madison Square Garden with over 19,000 people drawing the biggest gate for a non-pay-per-view event in history with a loaded main event of Rock Austin Taker and Kane vs Hunter Benoit Rikishi and Haku in an eight-man tag match. While a day later in front of over 15,000 in Philadelphia Rock and Austin teamed up against Benoit and Triple H in the main event, as Rock who during January 2001 worked four house shows with a combined attendance of over 64,000 people between them, is now set for three more advertised non-televised events for the foreseeable future. With Raw on the night building several major matches for SmackDown on Thursday specifically the upcoming number one contender match for the WWF title, Raw saw another angle shot for the loaded SmackDown show built as SmackDown Extreme with Undertaker vs Haku going 4 minutes with Rikishi laying out Taker post-match to see him and Kane challenging them to a first blood tag match. As the company which last week had one of its most watched weeks of television in months with Raw coming off the Rumble pay-per-view drawing the most watched broadcast in TNN history with over 7.3 million viewers while Smackdown three days later continued at record levels with over 7.9, heavily hyped Smackdown on Raw this week due to it being set to face one of the most competitive nights of the year with debuting shows from different genres on Thursday night. Raw's Rock Benoit Jericho Big Show 4-Way number 1 contender match after drawing Raw's most watched match of 2001 so far in the tag match last Monday, kicked off seconds from 11 p.m. with Rock making his entrance already past the top of the hour, going 7 minutes in the overrun with Rock pinning Jericho to book Rock vs a single for the title to headline the SmackDown Extreme special on Thursday, jumping over 700,000 viewers to a 5.9 rating. With Raw overall after the record TNN viewership of last week holding steady with a 5.4 rating. 